John, welcome to Mundine Means Business. Tell us about yourself and the business in track. Yeah, thanks Warren. Um, my name's John Briggs. Uh, I'm the uh, General Manager of Southern Australia, of uh, Intract Australia. Um, I guess I could probably go back to the beginning of Intract and how we started. Um, uh, we started in, in 2010. Um, I was approached by um, David and Andrew McMahon uh, from McMahon Services, who I'd previously worked with uh, about 20 years prior to that. And uh, I guess they approached me from my work that I'd done in, uh, in the Pilbara with Rio Tinto in the Aboriginal Training Liaison Unit over there and um, the work we've done with training Aboriginal people across the Pilbara and uh, gaining them access into the mines and, and mine jobs and creating a whole heap of change in the Pilbara back in the early 90s. Um, so they approached me, I guess, because they were doing quite a lot of work on Aboriginal communities um, in, in the works that they were doing in, in uh, asbestos removal, remediation, those types of uh, specialist work that they'd done in remote communities and they were working a lot with Aboriginal people and had Aboriginal people working for them but they found it difficult to to have someone that understood the way Aboriginal people are and the issues that some people have and they wanted someone to take ownership and um, you know create a, a I guess a, a safe environment for, for people to work with and how to better engage uh, communities once uh, people turned up on site. Uh, Dave and Andrew have been, I've known them for a long time, so they've been, um, they trust me and they've been very helpful to, to create this business and um, they're very passionate about it and this is what people don't understand or see. They've been very passionate about it. They've known me as an Aboriginal man for 30 years and uh, and they like the way I work from when I work from when they first started out. They, they saw the values that I had in, in the workplace uh, building my way up to supervisor and all the things that I've done there. So McMahon's have given Intract the, the capability and capacity to do our works. Now, if we, we also have a, a, a collaboration agreement with McMahon's which goes for another four years. So what that does is that allows us to embed our people into the McMahon group so that we can transfer those skills from their people to our people. And when I say that, we don't have any problems in, in getting um, tradesmen or, or building our capacity around um, operators. It's, it's the uh, middle to upper management that, that is lacking, not only in South Australia, but Australia. Now, to try and get an Aboriginal engineer or a project manager or an estimator or, or a contracts manager or anything like that is virtually impossible. So we have to grow them internally. What scale of work is in track capable of? We're very lucky that um, we can take on works to, you know, I guess our sweet spot would be be around the 10 to 15, but we, we also want to take on the 40 to $50 million projects. Um, our, the majority of our work at the moment is defence. Defence have been absolutely unbelievable as far as uh, Aboriginal engagement is concerned. And we have to tender up against other companies just like everyone else does and we, we win those works on our own merits because of our capabilities. And also our, our previous works, our previous experience in defence, and we've proven that we can do the job and we can do it well, just as good as anyone else, to the point that now we are winning uh, against, uh, I guess, everyday contractors out at, um, out at some of the northern suburbs bases, uh, we're winning against them um, because of our track record. So, you know, that's very pleasing and, and we want to continue that and we will continue that. What is your mission for your Indigenous workforce? I have a, I have a and I always have had uh, all these things in my mind that I've wanted to do for our people for a very long time. And this has given me the, the I guess, the platform to be able to do what I, I'm really passionate about. I'm lucky that I have the support of the other directors and in particular David and Andrew McMahon on the things that, that I want to achieve and I want to see. We talk about closing the gap, but we're, we're still a long way from closing the gap. We need to close it, we need to close it quicker. And how do we do that? We employ more Aboriginal people. How do we employ more Aboriginal people? Well, we've, we've got to get more work, you know. Once the IPP, the Indigenous Procurement Policy, stretches out to the 3% to the or the 4% or whatever it's going to be, there's going to be a massive opportunity for growth for Indigenous businesses in Australia. 
Now, if we can do that and employ more people, well, then we're going to achieve the things that we need to do, and that's reducing the gap, reducing the dependence on welfare, reducing the 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 people going into the uh, criminal system, into into corrections, uh, drug and alcohol, school school retention, all those things, health and safety even, and to the point where now that I've had some of my guys, quite a few of my guys have been with me for seven years, uh, we've got five or six of own their own houses, well not own their own houses, they're buying their own houses. So when I see that, when someone comes to me and says, John, I want to buy a house, how do I go about it? Well, I make it my business to help them um, to fill out their forms and get what they need to do to buy their house. Now, if we can have all our people own their own houses and own their own cars and have their kids going to school to year 12, then, then I think we're making a difference. I really do believe that. How important is it for the workforce to be culturally aware? It is so important. It is so important. I think if I go back to my days uh, working for, for Rio Tinto or slash Hammersley Iron as it was in those days in the early 90s, and that wasn't long after the, the Marbo, um, when Marbo was handed down, and I was uh, actually working in the mines in those times and, and there wasn't any Aboriginal people working there. You know, I think I saw one and uh, out of hundreds and hundreds of people. And when I made the move to Aboriginal Train Liaison Unit and we tried to get people into, into the mine sites, I was shocked at the, the, the bias, the unconscious bias, the racism that was, that was in, the, in the mining game. I was absolutely shocked, given that this was their country and they were kicked off their country so that miners could mine. And, and that's, you know, that's by and by and that's history now, but what we set about to do then was, um, was to try and change the culture and the perception that people had of Aboriginal people. Now, a lot of people would say that, oh, Aboriginal people are lazy, they don't want to work, they're drunks, they're this and that, they're violent and rah, 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 they don't want to work. Well, I can tell you there wasn't one person I came across in the Pilbara that didn't want a job. They all wanted a job and I would have personally trained 300 people in the Pilbara in my time there. So that tells me that people want to work and they want the same things as everyone else does and they can still retain their culture and their language at the same time. So we set about, uh, in those days, it was early days of cultural awareness training, um, groups of people, and we started off with managers and supervisors, were taken out to, to communities and they would stay there for a couple of days overnight. And some of the biggest rednecks I've ever seen would go out and come back and they completely had a different take on Aboriginal people once they'd sat down broke bread with them and listened to, to uh, what they had to say. How does Intrac maximise the goods and services of the local communities? That's another thing I'll make, make it my business, Warren. I'll go out and I'll hunt what I can to, to use. And I'll, I'll, I'd, you know, it, it might seem, I guess, biased to go and do that, but I think that I've got to give people the opportunity. I'm in now in a position where I can do that. You know, I'm in a lucky position where I can go and source other Aboriginal businesses and other community members to come and work for us. And, you know, our name, our name and our reputation is out there now. And people do approach me for work and for their businesses to use their goods and services. And, you know, I mean, I, I you know, that here we use coffee from Queensland um, that's owned by, uh, that comes from an Aboriginal business. All our printing's done by Print Junction. You know, all the other thing, a lot of other things that we do where we use Aboriginal people for cultural awareness training, for, for artworks, for all sorts of things that we do that, uh, that I go out and source and I'll, I'll continue to do that. A lot of your projects are remote, so how does that boost the local workforce? Of course it does. It's, it's another thing we like to do. Get out there and wherever we go and employ the people um, that are from that area. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of it. What's the point of taking a, a workforce out there when there's already a workforce there. I just find that ridiculous for, for a few reasons, because you're on their country, for one, and uh, so you've got to give people the opportunity, and for the other, there, there's, there's able-bodied people there that want to work. So why, why would you not use that? I mean, it's a cost-saving anyway, so it's a win-win, um, and I don't know why it's not, not done everywhere. What are some of the challenges of working in remote locations? Mm. Yeah, I don't see too many challenges myself. I, we quite enjoy it and I love it. And the more remote work we do, uh, that's, that's our sweet spot. And the challenges, 
you know, I guess the biggest challenge, if I want to look at it, and it's not from a people point of view, it's from, it's from a tendering or, or winning work point of view. Now, to me, um, a lot of agencies need to, to get their heads together and work out ways of, of having continuity in the work that they, that they send out to tender. That way, that for a company like us to go into an area and there's continuity of work from different, from different organisations, then we can actually get some really good training outcomes. So if we're, if I, I see it time and time again, you'll go to a community and do a tender, and it goes for six months, and then there'll be another, um, there'll be a, there'll be a gap of six months, and then they'll bring out another another tender for another six months. So well, why not try and piece it all together uh, and and get continuity so that you can get out there, do different types of works, and create some really good opportunities for people. Intract is a business, but you're more than that. Tell us about your work in the local community. We we try and give support wherever we can. We get, you know, we get so many requests for help um, across the board. It's very difficult to, to work out um, who we're going to help or who we're going to support. I've sort of steered away from the sporting groups, if you like, and 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 concentrated more on on where I believe that that we can create change, and that's in schools. Uh, we support um, uh, primary school children uh, down at Lefevre Primary School, uh, the Ocean View High School, Lefevre High School. We go and give talks to those kids. We support those. We are offering um, kids to come in and do work experience um, just to give them a taste of, of what we want to do. We support, uh, um, I guess, up in Arnhem Land, there's the, the, the fire truck up there and, and things like that that are on community. Um, you know, there's... We, we support people that come out of the prison system. Um, I believe everyone deserves a second chance, Warren. And um, if, we can, if we can help them transition from prison into, into the community and become a valuable member of the community, then we're doing our job, you know. It's, it's not our core business, but I believe we have a responsibility to help where we can.